not Early start a band. Early morning podcast, <laughs> coffee in my veins. I didn't have any coffee yet. That's too bad, we just started recording. May I borrow some of yours? What? You can have a few. I brought the entire thing I can here. have a few. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Fred and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're watching on Facebook and you want to like the page, that would be amazing. If you're listening on a platform like iTunes, hello Ooh. out there. I can just lull you to sleep with the sound of my voice. We want everyone up. We want everybody up. So maybe I can pull back and say thank you if you want to give us a five-star review because you think we deserve it. That would be amazing. We've been putting out content now for four years, and we couldn't be doing what we love without your support. So thank you for tuning in every single week. We got some big things to talk about today, but while I pour, pour myself some coffee, I'm going to hear a word from our sponsor from the from from me in the past. Really? Yeah, I'm a time traveler. Ooh. So let's go back and listen to a word from, a, from our sponsor <laughs> through me from the past. There's honestly nothing more important than taking care of yourself. Can we agree? Because if you're not feeling your best, you can't be your best. Sambucol helps you feel your best with powerful immune support powered by nature's superfruit, black elderberry. And I just so happen to have some Sambucol right here, the gummies. I love it in the gummy form. I can pop one in the morning with my black coffee. So not only am I taking care of what I'm putting in my body with food and exercise, I love adding Sambucol into the mix. I have one gummy every morning with my black coffee. The gummies are packed with vitamin C and zinc, and I love incorporating it into my wellness journey. So if you wanna add Sambucol into your wellness journey, you can get 15% off your next order of $9.99 or more at SambucolUSA dot com and use promo code freddy and Alyssa 15 for 15 percent off again to get 15 percent off your next order of 9.99 or more you can do so at sambucallusa.com and use promo code freddy and Alyssa 15 for 15 percent off your order now back to the show all right and we are back hot cup of coffee ready to go you know what's on everyone's mind what's that honey well, it is Wednesday, so maybe it just left everyone's <laughs> mind, but we're not going to let it leave the Super Bowl halftime show. Don't be confused with the Super Bowl itself, where for a million dollars the day of the Super Bowl, I couldn't have told you one team that was in it. The but Rams, I, the L.A. Rams. I know, yeah. I, I didn't even know that L.A. had a football team, so it's that's weird to me that I, I think. am that far <laughs> out of the... We talk about people with social media and... <laughs> everything like that and we're just like yeah like you got to get on tiktok well, how are people living and if you're like you didn't know that la where you lived for 15 years had a football team that was in the super bowl that won do you know my dad asked me he's like yeah is freddie watching the game right now and i go no dad <laughs> no he's not <laughs> you know what though i never actually watched football i watched the cleveland indians i watched um the cleveland Cavs growing up mm-hmm but I never got into football just because we were Cleveland Browns and it was just an inside joke in the family because they lost every single year for the past 615 years. So I, I think that's why we never watched, but my entire family is a faithful football fan, but I never watched. Huh. What were you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Not watching. I have big bl blocks missing of my big childhood. Blocks missing. What was I doing? I was just playing sports. That's what I did my whole life. But anywho... Let's get to this halftime show. Uh, what what did you think overall? Were, were you were you blown away? Was it average? What what do you think? As the great Lady Gaga once said, I'll put it this way: talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, spectacular, never the same, totally, completely unique, something like that. Yeah. It was so you that. liked it. I, I, you could say one loved it if her name was Alyssa Tabit Smith. Um, I literally feel every millennial watching just it, it brought something back into the, our veins, you know, yes, <laughs> all of these TikToks of people our age just freaking out as we should be because it was fantastic. Yeah. Nostalgia is becoming. Why is nostalgia the, one of the most it's, it's up there in it's like a cousin of love. You know, I remember when I was 18, I started having a lot of nostalgia more so than I ever had. And I 
recall Googling it or looking it up, researching, because that, that's pretty young age to Google. And they were basically saying that nostalgia happens when you're at a point in your life that maybe, you know, it's a, it's a turning point. It's a new chapter. You're remembering the old times and it's maybe a coping mechanism, if you will. Because I noticed for me, I get, I'm a very nostalgic person. But when I was 18, I just kept going, why do I keep having these feelings of, you know, my childhood and my parents and my sister and all these memories? Now, granted, I was 18. I had just moved across the country from my family. I wasn't in high school anymore. And I don't know. I just remember that moment. I used to listen to all these old songs. And the older I get, the more nostalgic I get. You felt nostalgic when you were only 18? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Maybe you were just a little heartbroken from moving from home. Maybe it wasn't. I, it was the first age where I really started leaning in and leaning into memories I had. And I was like, wow, I really love this music. My mom used to play this song for me. Or, oh, I used to go here with my parents. I don't know what that is. When do you think you I first got nostalgia? At the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> I I mean, I don't think I felt it at 18. or I think I have nostalgia now because I'm aware that I am going to be 34 next month. I am a completely different person. Yes. I, I am. I, there's only like, I'm like 90% different. Yeah. I have my core of who I am that I've always, I look back at my 12-year-old self, 8-year-old self. I'm like, oh my God, even six years old. Yep. I'll never forget. I remember nothing about kindergarten. This is like one of the only five stories I remember, but this just shows. You have a kindergarten story? I have a kindergarten what? story. How I was, this is how I was born. Uh, and it's what I deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> and you have to deal with it as my business partner. I was coloring and it was like a jungle. It was all black and white. It was like a jungle with animals. And there were numbers hidden inside this black and white coloring thing and the assignment was to color in all the numbers that you find mixed in this picture but only if the number is solid so if it's hmm. cut off on the page that doesn't count that's a trick it has to be solid numbers that you color in well I was coloring them all in and we got partners and my partner colored one of the a number six that was cut off and I go, that's not what the assignment was. And I went up to the teacher and said, can I get a fresh piece of paper? I need to start over because this isn't right. So at that young age, you already knew, uh-uh, I can't have that. It Absolutely can't be wrong. not. <gasps> and something in third grade that stuck with me was this little saying that Mrs. Morano, Mrs. Moran, Morano, Morano, Mrs. Morano. I'll have to ask my mom or look in the yearbook. I Mrs. had a Morano. Mrs. Carano. Carano? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if you have a Murano or a Corano, you're automatically a school teacher in middle school. I think that sounds like a perfect... Like, I would definitely go, that's the name for 100%. if you're writing a script. But she said, when a job has first begun, never leave it till it's done. Be the labor, big or small. Do it right or not at all. Whoa. Or I heard another saying, I don't know where this is from. There's a right way and a wrong way to do something. Why not do it the right way? I'm almost positive you coined that second phrase. <laughs> I just, I'm, I like when things are just efficient done. But anywho, I don't remember much of, I, I don't know what I was doing. I remember where we were with all this stuff. But nostalgia started for me because the world was different. Yeah. You know, like being with your buddies with that CD case and picking CDs and putting Eminem and Dr. Dre and 50 Cent into the cd player which was an aftermarket cd player with the subwoofers in the trunk you're driving for the first time meeting girls like you're living a teenage life that's yeah. a whole different world and so i feel nostalgic because i don't really feel that nostalgic about things in my 20s like when i look back I and i hear california girls they're on the <laughs> That makes me smile, but it doesn't give me nostalgia. No. It's kind of like, ugh. Like, there are so many songs that I can't even listen to anymore because our 20s were so wild and crazy that it seems like every song is attached to some <laughs> event that I'm like. But with Eminem, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, those were the times that I was like, just life was different you know so i think you feel nostalgia same thing with nintendo 64 i was Gold going and I, to say super mario brothers i 
just got a box from my parents' house that had, it literally was like a time capsule. They go, oh, here's some of your memories. My dad's trying to get rid of storage. Bless him. We've been watching him. Burn it. (laughs) Not worth the stress. My dad is slowly but surely trying to get everything out of storage. And he's trying to sell some stuff too, which he was very, very successful the other day. Quick side note, then I'll get to my time capsule story. But he was on Facebook the night of the Super Bowl, my father, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to put this uh, queen mattress up. And I was like, oh, gosh, Dad, you're not going to sell that. He goes, hey, let's just put it up. Let's put it up. Well, the next day he calls me. He's like, hey, let's see. I'm at the storage unit with a buyer. Do you have Zell? <laughs> it's like, yes, Dad. <laughs> have them send it to me. And I still haven't sent him the money. <laughs> I forgot. To oh, money. yeah. You got to send it. <laughs> but anywho. It just cracks me up. My dad's very efficient. He likes to just make everything just so. But he had given me some of my boxes from when I was a child. And opening it up was a legitimate blast, true blast from the past. I felt like I was back in the 90s. I found my Nintendo Game Boy. I found my Sega, um, the little portable one. That one actually had color on the screen. But when I picked up my Game Boy, it was legit in that black and white color remember and you had to adjust the settings for the brightness and I noticed that before I started playing because I go why is this so dim I can't see and I go oh yeah I had to sit and turn it down but you can't sit in the dark and play your game boy it's just you have to be in the wild I know I know and then I found just so many different um wardrobe pieces like I have my very first cheerleading jacket from I think it was like 94 I was so young and then I found this journal that I wrote (laughs) in it I I was like yes I have two boyfriends right now you know I like Joey better than Justin because sometimes Justin bugs me and he annoys me and then my next breath is oh but then I have a crush on Nathan from camp I wonder if I'll ever see him again you never know. The, the, my thought process was the funniest thing I'd ever read. I go, who is this 10-year-old girl? Someone come get her. I remember when you read a bunch of that journal. It, it was incredibly impressive hmm. of how well you could write. And yet again, it's one of those things you look back. That's the part of you that for some reason in your brain, words and writing yep. and storytelling in that way. There's, I mean, I, 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 if I... I'll have to call my mom and have her read when I was 10. I feel like I was every other 10-year-old. I got a dog today. The dog is nice. The dog's my best friend. I have a friend, TJ, in school. We wear the same t-shirt and play on the same kickball team. Today was great. I love my parents. And you were like, I was pondering today, and I was kind of pontificating if whether or not Joey and Justin would be a good husband for me. Because it's never too early to plan. Are they set up for a 401k? Do they even know what a Roth IRA is? But they better have chivalry and be able to open the door (laughs) when we go on our very first date. Because I'm going to introduce them to my father. And let me tell you about my father, Rick. He will do anything to sell two queen mattresses. (laughs) Even leave his job to go collect $10 Ten dollars for a mattress or whatever it was. It was one twenty-five. The only reason I have I have beef with it is because your parents were kind enough when they first moved into their house to help sell their stuff. They're like, "Can you do this, Freddie, and sell all the stuff? We'll split the the money with you." And I was like, "Hey, I would have done it for free. So if you're gonna give me some cash, why not?" After the experience, I go, "Not worth it." <laughs> it's not worth getting text messages on Facebook. Um, marketplace or let go or all these things it is you should do it just for an experience but it is just a nightmare twelve hundred dollars would you take two hundred no no (laughs) that's why it's twelve hundred it's a dresser a nightstand two twin beds two mattresses and all the decorations brand new twelve hundreds already a deal you're not taking two (laughs) hundred But anyway, I'm glad that he is selling that and they're getting rid of that storage unit. But I know. And back to your phenomenal writing. Back to my phenomenal writing. You'll you'll actually find this quite funny. So amongst this box, I find a an old notebook um, from senior year. And it was, in, it was from my psychology class. And the assignment was to write 100 facts about yourself. And do you know one of those facts was I despise math? Isn't that interesting? 
it, 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 that's very true. <laughs> it was a fact. It was a fact. But man, that journal had some of the funniest things. Down to the point, I even said, I love when I have a little bit of a sunburn on my face. <laughs> I'm like, Alyssa, what were you doing? I was out of control. I was out of control. But to be fair, I really do love the look when I have a little sun on my face. Yeah, not sunburn. Not sunburn. Well, I saw that picture of you as a kid, and you were tan. I know. Like, we as children spent so much time outside that we were actually, like, not, like, had a little color. We were beyond, beyond. the being burnt or a little red. Like, it was a dark, yeah. you know, complexion from being in the sun in the summer months. Well, you grew up in Florida, but when I was in the summer, I mean, you are pictures of me that I go, oh, You're my so dark. God. You know, it's wild because... I feel even through our 20s, we both were very tan. We were in the sun a lot. And for me, I still love to get color, but it's not good for aging <laughs> at all. So sometimes I got to stay the F out of the sun, if you will. I think it all depends. I feel like my mom, she's been a huge um, That's true sun too. bather. And Your mom, though, she is just an anomaly, though. She just lives her life, does whatever is best for her, and she just, like, I don't need water. I'll have my Diet Coke or Coke. Yeah. <laughs> I can be in the sun. I won't age. I'll have perfect skin. <laughs> like, her skin is perfect. Yeah. And I even tell you that now that you've been on your diet for six months today, right? Yeah. I, before we get into that, I tell you, I look at you and I go, dang it. Maybe I need to do what he's doing because your skin is just perfection. It's literally flawless. Well, thank you. But can we talk about the six months? Yes. What have you been doing? How much have you lost? What are you eating? And how are you feeling? What, what, what is it that kept you on this track for so long? All right, y'all, let's chat wines. Today's episode is brought to you by First Leaf Wine Club. So you all know I love wines and you know I love exploring new wines. However, I don't always know what to do or what to choose when finding a new wine. Well, come in first leaf. That is why I love them. They remove all of the guesswork, doing all of the hard work to discover great wines so I can just enjoy them. This is the really cool part. I'm now on my second shipment. And when you rate the wine you receive from the first shipment, First Leaf learns more about your palate. So not only are you being introduced to tons of new wine, but First Leaf boxes get better. So for instance, based off of my last wine selection, I realized that I really love a good cab, a nice Sauvignon Blanc. And now for my next shipment, it will be even more tailor-made just for me. <laughs> but here's a fun little not-so-secret fact. They work directly with winemakers, which means you get incredible wine 60% off retail. Just ask my hubby. He is thrilled about the money that we're saving. And one of my favorite parts about using First Leaf, when I come home and there is a little package waiting for me, I love, love, love going through it and looking at all of the different wine selections for this brand new shipment. My favorite so far, I would have to say, is the Color Wash Sauvignon Blanc. It's got hints of guava and grapefruit. Mm, it's just so yummy. So if you love finding and tasting new wine, First Leaf is a no-brainer. Join today and you will get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Alyssa. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Again, tryfirstleaf.com slash Alyssa. Now back to the show. What got me started is I kind of had what a lot of people talk about in business and in fitness or even maybe in relationships. And, and anytime there's a huge change in your life, they, they call it the day of disgust. Mm. Where you just have this day if someone's like a heavy drinker or an eat, you know, eating or their finances and they're just like, I just, I couldn't afford gifts this Christmas or I, I couldn't bend down to tie my shoes or I woke up in the bushes black, like the day of disgust. <laughs> what was the last one? Wake up in the bushes. <laughs> have you ever done that? <laughs> Once or twice, but I was in my 20s. So I had a really good night's sleep and, you know, got some color and fresh air and then went inside at eight in the morning. Come on. But you hit a day of disgust and you go, it's, it's time to make a change. It's time to make the sacrifice because I just felt like crap. 
Mm-hmm. I was tired of it. And then with us being on camera, I just want to feel confident. You know, I, I think um, that was a huge part of it. But with our ambitions and what we want to accomplish, I just knew that being 40, 50 pounds overweight, and I was very blessed that I carried it well. You can definitely tell that I was heavier. Obviously, it's 41 pounds that I've lost. But just the way my body, like, thank God, kind of holds it, mm-hmm. I, I covered it well. If I had a beard and, like, I dressed a certain way with certain angles, like, I look back. Even the other day, we were looking at a podcast, and I was like, how was I 210 in that? Like, I don't look 210. <laughs> yeah. But it was just the way the angles were in the podcast and all of that. But I just, I, I feel confident. I feel so much better. So I think that's to answer your question directly. <laughs> I had a day of disgust, but I didn't want to do the roller coaster anymore because I was always crash dieting to lose as quickly as possible so that I could start eating again and not have to diet. Hmm. Where this time I go, I can't, I'm not going to go through this entire especially the first 30 days it's so hard i was like i've done this five different times i'm doing it one last time and i'm never going back again so what do i need to change i need to think about what can i do forever not what can i do for 90 days to lose as much weight as possible because that's failed every time yeah so i i said i need a new relationship with food um there was a um a gentleman at my work chandler for those of you who watched the show he did the whole 30 diet two, three years ago, and it was the only diet that I never tried. <laughs> and I said, what's the, what was the purpose of the Whole30? And it's to, it's to build a new relationship with food. So the Whole30, you can look it up online, but essentially you cut out all the bullshit. So um, all I would eat for 30 days is meat, vegetables, fruit, and maybe almonds. That's it. Then after 30 days, you're supposed to incorporate a little dairy, a little grains, alcohol, refined sugar, and see how your body reacts. Do you get bloated? Do you feel tired? Do you sleep like crap? What is creating that? That's why you reintroduce dairy by itself for a week every other day and go, how's my body feeling? Because you're so clean. Hmm. Well, I felt so good, and I've read enough things even about dairy. I go, why do I need dairy? Maybe I shouldn't do that. Why am I having all this bad food? So I just stayed on it. The only thing that I incorporated back in were some grains. So I do, after like 35 days, I started adding in a baked potato. I started in, or baked potato actually is on the Whole30. Yeah. Um, But I I added back in like rice, beans, um, Ezekiel bread. So then can you share to what your daily meals look like? What's breakfast? What's lunch? What's dinner? What's a snack? What does freddie smith do for yeah so this is a tad boring and i'm just so don't let this kind of you know discourage you he's not creative with his meals no but there's a lot of a lot of delicious healthy meals that if you're that like if you're a cook and you want to do it you can make this more exciting for me convenience Mm -hmm. and quickness is what i went for so what i do is i'll eat um at night like i'll have my dessert and I'll probably maybe go to bed maybe an hour or two without eating. I'll sleep seven, eight hours. And then I wait a few hours in the morning to break my fast, which is break, break fa- breakfast. Yeah. Is break fast. <laughs> uh, I do about 12 to 14 hours. So people are typically saying if you're going to do intermittent fasting, do 16 hours of no food. I just do 12 or 14. I still think that's great. I think people get in trouble if you eat at midnight and then you wake up for work at 6 a.m. and eat again. Hmm. That's a little much. But I do 12 hours. So I stop eating at like 10, 11, and then I won't eat till like noon or one. So anyway, my first meal of the day will be two pieces of Ezekiel toast, which is a flourless toast. And I have almond butter on it. And at first, you're going to be like, this is dry, Freddie. I need your address. I'm going to come there and slap you in the face. I can barely swallow this. However... It starts to rub off on you and it starts to become very delicious. Almond butter on Ezekiel toast with a hot black cup of coffee Mm. is my favorite. I look forward to it every single day. Then I eat leftovers from the night before. So if I have a little leftover beef or a little leftover turkey with a little rice or a little baked potato, so something small, about two, 300 calories of leftover. So here's my my little cheat if if you want to kind of build this on your own. I eat about 2,000 calories a day, but I only eat about 500 before my dinner. 
So that's all I have throughout the day is my Ezekiel toast and then that little lunch, which is about 500 calories. Then I wait till about six, seven, or eight o'clock before I have my big dinner. And this is where I indulge. So I'll do my favorite is ground beef with chopped up onions and garlic salt. It all simmers in the pan and the juices are just sitting at the bottom. Then I get a bowl and I put a little shredded lettuce and then I get some rice and I mix the rice in with the beef and the onions and I pour that juice and all of that over the rice. Sometimes I'll put a hard boiled egg with it and I'll eat 75% of that pan. Mm-hmm. which is about eight 900 calories, and I am stuffed. But I'm still only at 1,400. So then I'll have myself like a bubbly, which are like LaCroix sparkling water kind mm-hmm. of thing. And then around like 9 or 10 o'clock, I get an entire bag of frozen blueberries. I put a small handful of pistachios and mix it in, and I eat it frozen blueberries. Don't let them thaw. Different taste. Frozen blueberries with pistachios is about 400 calories. And that equals around 1,800 to 2,000 calories for the day. So I eat four meals, but my dinner is what I get excited about. So if we go out to eat, I'll get a piece of salmon, broccoli, a baked Mm -hmm. potato, no butter. But I eat about 800 to 1,000 calories at my dinner, and that is kind of like my staple. So have you had butter since? I've had a little butter. A little bit, but no dairy. You don't do cheese anymore. I mean, isn't butter dairy? Well... I mean, technically, but if you're not having it often, yeah. And and I'm not and I'm not crazy picky about it. I'm kind of like, if I go out, you know, I'll eat. I mean, I eat like salmon, but I don't ask for it plain, no butter, no oil. No. Like I'll like, hey, I'm eating it. He always goes, "Ooh, this is a treat. So oh, much oil." <laughs> when you eat super clean, and then here's kind of my philosophy to to share what what my plan is with this. Um, I had a goal of losing 50 pounds. I wanted, I started at 215. I want to get to 165. When I first got on the whole acting scene, when I started 90210 in 2010, I was 162. When I moved out to Hollywood at a, as an 18 year old, I think I weighed like 155, but I was still a boy, Mm -hmm. but I was like pretty shredded. Then I ended up sitting around 160 to 170 is where I sat most of my career until I started gaining weight, getting into the 180s, then the 190s, then the 2000s. And then after we moved to Florida and the wedding, I said, let's push it. Let's push 220 for fun. (laughs) So I want to sit between like 160 and 170. So I said 165. I just like the metrics yet again, making sure that the numbers in kindergarten wasn't colored outside the lines. There was something about losing 50 pounds. So I want to get to 165. Once I'm at 165, then on Saturdays or Fridays, we'll have to decide, we're going to do one cheat meal and date night. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to reintroduce, I'll have my Philly cheesesteak and I'll drink that night. And I want to do that for a month where just on Saturdays I have a cheat day. And after the month, I want to see if I'm still that weight. If I didn't gain any weight, then I can now eat clean. But every Saturday I can drink and eat mm-hmm. and be merry. Um, and so that's going to be my, my whole philosophy. And then anybody who's interested in like a couple hacks – because I feel like we all need a little hacks. Here's something that's really helped me. When you first start working out and you start dieting, I would do it separately. <laughs> so if you're someone who's like, oh, I haven't worked out in a lot, long time or I need to start working out, I would recommend the first 30 days, eat clean and focus on your diet solely. Don't go from two years of not working out and eating Big Macs and you think you're going to have uh, hard-boiled eggs and some vegetables <laughs> and go run three miles. You're going to be starving. Yeah. Get the food down first. Don't worry about the working out the first 30 days. Maybe do some steps. Walk mm-hmm. five to 10,000 steps if you can, but don't do anything crazy workout wise. Get in the habit of the diet and then start gradually building into your workout routine. I love that. So, so then for you right now, do you ever get cravings that hit you is there anything you're really excited for eventually when you hit that goal weight and you decide to have your cheat meal what is that one meal well here's what's funny about the cheat meal i kind of don't want it the only reason i don't force, want it let's because i'm, I'm mean, gonna force myself it. to have a cheat meal because i'm afraid if i go too long i don't want to have a weird reaction sure. to dairy i don't want you and i to be celebrating or out somewhere 
six months from now and I have my first Philly cheesesteak and I have to excuse myself. And Lord people no, are like, where'd please. you go? I come back drenched in sweat. I go, hey, the dairy <laughs> wasn't a good match. Wasn't a good match. <laughs> so I don't want to get my body too out of whack. So I do want to have a slice of pizza or do something just so that I don't I don't want to so eat. So answer the question. What's the cheat meal? <laughs> but here's my, there's the caveat. I don't even know if I want it, though, because I know it's going to bloat me and make me feel like crap. The only thing I miss is drinking. Okay, so then that's your cheat meal. Because that isn't... When you have a pizza, a medium Philly cheesesteak pizza to yourself from Domino's, ordering it, dopamine. Waiting for it to come when it says it's in the oven... And you're like watching the bar, dopamine. Shows up at the door, dopamine. The smell, dopamine. Sit down, do you get a plate? No, you eat it out of the box like a man. And I eat the entire medium pizza. Are you standing while doing this? Sometimes. Yes. Depends. Because if there's no time to go sit and you need to get it to the mouth, then you do that. But I eat the whole medium pizza, dopamine, you sit down, then you start feeling the opposite effect. You're full, you're bloated, you're tired, you regret it. And it goes away. So you only get about an hour of happiness. With drinking, you can have four or five drinks over a six-hour night, and you're feeling great for six, seven, eight hours straight. You get your minds free. You're relaxed. You're actually using those calories, and you might be a little hungover, but it was for six hours of happiness. However, I would like to counter the cheat meal because if you maybe just had one or two slices, you would get that same dopamine, but you're not sick after. And you know what? Maybe you were the student in kindergarten that would color the six that's out of the line and hand it in. No, if you order a pizza, you finish it. Or maybe the kid drawing the six outside was thinking outside the box, trying to figure out some balance of some sort. No. <laughs> Creative thinker, Fred. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah. So here's the next thing, though. If your cheat meal is alcohol, I guarantee you a couple cocktails in, you're going to go, ooh, I'd love a pizza. <laughs> yeah. So that I have to do the alcohol first, then then I'll, I'll want the pizza. You'll want it all. But um, but yeah, so long, long story to wrap this all up. I, I just I needed to get back into where I felt confident. Sure. My sleep's better. Um, and, and there's something about my energy now that I feel like we're attracting the world to us. We're attracting opportunities because I'm not spending, and this is such a good point for, for you all to think about if you're thinking about losing weight too. How much time do you spend in the mirror self-hating, self-talking, um, not liking how your clothes fit, aches and pains, like all of that goes away and you free up your mind to actually look in the mirror and be like, damn. Like, I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. I feel good. My clothes fit good. I'm going to go shopping. Like, you, you, you end, it turns into a positive thing, and positivity attracts more positivity. So I was mm -hmm. hurting myself. Now, if you're happy with your weight, then that's great. Yeah. I was not happy. Even though people said, oh, you're still adorable. My wife still loved me. That's fine. <laughs> I was not happy with myself. Yeah, of course. I just wasn't. It's the most important. I'm pissed that I was like 208 when we got married. Like, I want to renew our vows because I, I can't even share those photos. I'm so pissed. But reviewing our vows in the future with we, our parents with our would be family sweet. would be amazing. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I can actually wear a, a suit that fits. And I get so excited to share our wedding photos every year, Valentine's Day, and you're like, nah. It's done. No more <laughs> sharing. No more. We need to renew. Let's try to renew. I feel like it's weird to renew it before five years. No way. Yeah, maybe we'll do it in this upcoming year. Hey. Or see. who knows. But anywho, um, <laughs> I want to thank everyone for the support on my journey. Yeah. Uh, I'm just getting started. And um, so, yeah, I don't really have like any specific piece of advice. I just kind of like to share what's going on in my head. But I'm just hoping that if you are looking to lose weight, maybe my actions inspired yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Uh, six months will go by. The next six months will go by, whether you're eating clean or unhealthy. And I'll yeah. tell you this right now, out of everything in my life, how many times do I tell you that was, sing, that was the best decision I've ever made in my life? 100%. I, I felt I had 99% things in this new chapter, new career starting. There were so many things that mm -hmm. were going so right. And I go, there's still something off. What is it? And I go, you know what it is, Freddie. <laughs> you know what it is. Just get after it, man. And I did. And it substantially changed my life in so many ways. And the last thing about it 
is it's not just how you feel and look and all of that. You can have your head hit the pillow every night. And no matter what went on in that day, no matter what went on, when I go on that dry erase board and I'm like 181 days and I, and I, and I hit my head on the pillow and I wake up and I go, another day. I, I did it. No matter what happened that day, I c- you know what it is? I can control this. Yeah. I can't control anything else. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have my say in it. Right. I do my best. But what you put in your mouth, no matter what, you are 100% control of. Yep. And everything else, I mean, it's life. So why not take charge of the one thing you actually can control and guarantee success? Yeah. You can guarantee it. Well, I'm so. proud of you, honey. Well, thank you. Amazing job. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I feel great. I appreciate you. Um, looking good, yeah. baby. Looking like a snack. <laughs> looking like a snack. Well, um, we got just a couple more minutes here. Where are you uh, headed right now? We want to let, let's fill people in on the whole What's real estate thing happening? real quick. And then we got like two minutes before we have to go. But I want to keep people up to date on our real estate journey. A lot going on this week. A lot, what, what's going on? A lot going on this week. First appointment of the day today. I'm meeting with my client, aka my brother in law. And I'm so excited. He came up from New Jersey. My Down. sister. Or, whoa. He came up from New Jersey? Come on, Alyssa. <laughs> what was that? It's not even nine o'clock yet. Get I your know. life together, girl. No, thank you for that. He came down from New Jersey. My sister and the girls are still up there. And this was the first time he was seeing the neighborhood in person. He was seeing the house in person because they put an offer in sight unseen. They had never seen any of it. They actually hadn't even been to this part of Orlando, <laughs> but they trusted their yeah. real estate advisor here, a.k.a. their sister, too. And, um, you know, I just I, I know my sister. I knew the area she'd want to be in. They obviously saw a virtual tour of this new build. Uh, and for the first time, he came in yesterday and he drove through um, the neighborhood and he absolutely loves it, is obsessed. I told him exactly where to go um, restaurant wise. And he was just like, I'm so happy we're going to really, he could really see the life he's going to have with his girls. It's a family oriented community, but he's never seen the completed finished model of this house. So this morning I'm going to go meet with him, show him around. This neighborhood has just all these really cool features for families and just different pools and splash pads and they do yoga there and there's all this stuff. So I'm going to show him everything this morning and their house is going to be done March 23rd. So it's really, really getting close. I mean, the outside and exterior are all really getting to those final stages, but now they're going to work on the inside. So I'm going to show him the model, which I know he's going to love even more. And I'm just stoked because it, it really had been a long journey trying to find them a house we were looking since i think last august yeah you know and you know to be fair they didn't know central florida at all Mm -hmm. so i had to you know show them all the areas and try and help them figure out hey you will love this and i would tell them that 10 times and then on the 11th time they listen (laughs) it was where i mean and they got in just in time just in time i get i almost just like I, i bet you by March 23rd, they'll have at least 50, 60,000 equity in that house already. 100%. And this house, there were so many bids on it. And we were so nervous they weren't going to get it. And it was New Year's Eve, which it, happens to be a really great day yeah. for us. Just tons of juju around that date. And we got the call. I think it was at 7 at night. And I thought it would be the next day because I was like, man, maybe they didn't get it. And they called me at 7 going theirs was accepted and I called them I'd never heard my sister so happy that's great so we are just absolutely thrilled for them to come here for them to have an incredible place that they get to call home that they love you know yeah and just be 20 minutes from family and yes and so we're excited for them and then what's uh what's going on tomorrow tomorrow oh I've got a closing tomorrow. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> it's like, what's happening tomorrow? See, closing is the technical phrase. Yes. But what I like to say is payday. Payday. Daddy loves payday. Payday, <laughs> baby. I'm really excited for this client, too, because she had been looking for a second home 
um, down here in this area. And we were looking for a long time. There's a lot that went into it, but she's she's amazing. I, I feel seriously so lucky with the clients that we've been able to work with thus far. Everyone has about- been remarkable uh, yeah you got it you you get what you put out it's the same thing with our podcast yeah it, it's like when, when we have a vibe and a mindset yeah it it attracts it. that yep. kind of person who's like oh I'm, I'm ready to vibe out and i feel like that's how we are with clients yeah just talked to these wonderful ladies two days ago i can yes. already tell just through the energy that it feels good because Alyssa and i when we're building our business too because we have a few other things going on we've set ourselves up where Real estate's our top priority, but we're not thirsty where it's like, we need this to go through. Like, well, if someone's weird or disrespectful, we'll still work with them. Like, we're very much like good vibes only people. Mm -hmm. And we set ourselves up. We learned that because of acting. You never want to be like, please let me book this or please the client. You drive yourself nuts. Like, we're just like hanging out, enjoying the process, finding people homes. So, well, we, well, I'm going to edit, but you got (laughs) to hop out of here. And it wouldn't be the same if I continued without you. So um let's uh let's wrap it up we'll be back next wednesday thank you all so much for coming on this journey with us wishing you just the most amazing week ever and we will talk to you soon